Did you know that if you're currently a remote worker and your employer is forcing you back into the office without offering a raise, they're essentially asking you to take a pay cut because your time is worth money and also commuting costs money as well. I've built a model here to help you calculate exactly how much. So if you don't want to get too deep into this and just want to plug in some numbers to figure out your situation, you just need to put in your own information here in the green cells that have italics. I'll walk through this example now and explain my model if you want to follow along. So assume that you're making $60,000 a year and you work 40 hours a week, 45 weeks per year, which takes into account public holidays and vacation time. The average U.S. worker is working between 1,800 and 2,000 hours per year, and we're going to need your hourly pay for this. Even if you're not an hourly employee, say you're salaried, you don't make overtime, this is just necessary for the model, and this calculates everything automatically. So assuming $60,000 a year, you're hourly pay rate is 3333. Let's also look at commuting costs. So the US average is $8,466 per full-time worker. Most people in the US are commuting by car. For this model to keep the numbers a little prettier, I just bumped it down to $8,000 per year. That's assuming full-time commuting. And the average American commutes about half an hour each way to and from their workplace. So your average daily commute is one hour. Now this modifier for commuting time basically takes into account the fact that commuting time is kind of liminal. It's a weird time that's not exactly your own, but you're not on the clock for your job either. What I mean by this is that one hour that you have to spend commuting is one hour that you won't be able to spend playing with your kids or with your dog or working in your garden or doing whatever that is currently your own time as a remote worker working from home. You still have some agency on your commute, like you could listen to podcasts in the car, but you're still driving, and so you want to value that as labor. So to model this out, I've basically just counted this as half and half. So if your daily commute is one hour, we're just going to count it as half an hour. It's kind of half your time, half your employer's time. You could also argue, though, that you're already working 40 hours per week, so anything additional beyond that compared to what you're doing now should be valued at overtime. And so if you believe that, just change this number to one or higher than one if you want to be valuing your own time at a premium. And then this part is optional, but you can also put in your monthly rent payment. And that's just a way to help benchmark this, to help you kind of put in more visceral terms how much money your employer is asking you to essentially give up for free if they're not giving you a raise in addition to forcing you back into the office with this new commute. Okay, so based on this model, let's look at two scenarios. I've also modeled it out for two days a week, four days a week, one day a week commuting into the office. But for the sake of this demo, I'll just talk about the five days and the three day kind of hybrid. In the case of a three day hybrid, we're only taking 60% of this $8,000 a year in commuting costs because you're only commuting three days out of a five-day work week, so that's 4800 there. You're spending an hour and a half of additional time per week in your commute. It's three hours total, but we're counting half of it in this model. Again, you can change that modifier if you want to value your time differently. And so multiplying that 1.5 by the 45 weeks per year that you're working, you get to 67 and a half. Then you're going to multiply that by your hourly pay rate, which was that 33.33 there. That gets us to $2,250 a year. That's essentially uncompensated commuting time. That's new work time that you're not going to be paid for because you have to get in the car and go to the office now. So if we add that up, this 2250 plus the actual cost that you're paying for your car, your gas, your insurance, parking, all of that stuff, that adds up to $7,050 per year that you need to be compensated for, right? So if we add that to your current salary of 60K, that gets us to 67050 per year. So that's your break even. If your employer is not paying you that and forcing you back into the office three days a week, then you're essentially taking a pay cut. And to kind of put this in more visceral terms, assuming that you're paying $2,000 a month in rent, that's like three and a half months worth of rent payments that 
your employer is essentially asking you to contribute to them for free without compensating you for that. If you do a full back to office for five days a week, then your additional costs are going to add up to an additional 11750 per year. So your break even there is going to be 71750 right? So you have to be getting that raise to not be losing money. And in this scenario, that's almost six months worth of your rent payments worth of essentially additional time and real money that you're paying for your car and all of that, that you're not being compensated for. Hopefully this helps you make more informed decisions. I will post a link where you can make a copy of this Google Sheet and you can put in your own numbers to calculate what makes sense for you. If you're experiencing a different kind of scenario and you would like me to model it, feel free to message me and I can see what I can do to model that for you. All right, hope that was helpful. Talk to you later. Bye.